In this video you will learn everything that you need to know about Angular SSR or Angular Service Side Rendering inside Angular version 17. And just to remind you, previously inside Angular we had something which was called Angular Universal to render Angular first of all on the server and then on the client. It was not good enough, this is why it was completely rewritten, and now we are getting an additional package, which is called SSR. And we have two possibilities how to add server-side rendering inside our project. The first possibility is to generate it with option minus minus SSR. As you can see here, I am using NPX and Angular CLI 17 to generate a new Angular application in my current folder. Most importantly here is this option minus minus SSR, which will add server-side rendering for this project. Even if we don't put it here and simply hit enter, we will be asked if we need that. For example here I can say that my application is the name app, and we have here CSS. After this we are getting exactly this question, do you want to enable server-side rendering? So either we are using minus minus SSR, or here we are selecting yes. And then we will get additional files where the whole server-side rendering will be configured for us. Another possibility, if you already have a project and you want to migrate it to server-side rendering, is to write instead of ng-new, ng-add, at angular SSR. And it will install this additional package and it will create all files which are needed for server-side rendering. Let's look on the outcome of all these changes. Here is my project. And the main difference is that inside root we are getting server TS, we don't typically get it inside Angular application. And here inside we have the normal express project, which will be executed inside node. Most importantly here is our function app, we are doing lots of stuff, and it will render our Angular application on the server and generate markup. So here is the start of our express server, but for us the most important part is this server get. Server get star means that it doesn't really matter on what route we are jumping, this code will be triggered. And here we are getting things like protocol, original URL, base URL, and then we are calling common engine.render. This is exactly what will render for us on server side our Angular application. And the most important part here is this bootstrap. And as you can see here, we are getting this bootstrap from file source main server. And again, previously we never had this main server inside source, we are typically getting just main TS, this is defined for the client, and now we are getting here main server TS. And this bootstrap is coming inside common engine render. After this, we are providing here index.html path, URL, public path, and we are good to go. Now let's look what is inside our main server file. So inside source, let's open side by side, main TS on the top and main server on the bottom. As you can see they are extremely similar, we are using exactly the same bootstrap application on the top and on the bottom, and we are passing inside the same app component. The only difference is that inside server we are using app config server and inside client just app config like we typically do. So in our case here we are rendering our app component inside server side first. So we must jump inside our app, app component, and here we see just completely normal standalone component where we are rendering some code. But we must also look on this app config TS, this is what we use on client, and here what we are using on the server. The main difference is that here inside our server config we have this provide server rendering provider. And then it merges all options from our app config with the server config, which essentially means if we are adding some stuff which is needed for our application, we typically need to just add it to our app config, and our app server config will be automatically merged. So here the most interesting part is this provide server rendering, which is coming from platform server, and inside our normal app config we are using here provide client hydration. This is why here we must talk what is client hydration at all. This is something that you need to know about, but you can't really control it. The main idea is that we are getting some markup from the backend, it was generated, and previously Angular simply deleted it fully at the moment when it rendered client side. It didn't use anything from the server. 
it doesn't really make a lot of sense and this is something which Vue did just from the start. It was completely possible to initialize Vue application on existing DOM markup. Now Angular does something similar, as well as React for example, we can render our application on the server and then it tries to reuse exactly that markup which was already rendered on the client without need to build it from scratch. Which actually means this process of hydration is to transfer all markup and all data from the server to the client. And actually we got it starting from Angular 16. Now let's start our application. I can simply jump to the console and run npm start. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. And as you can see in browser, this is how my application is looking like. It is just a default application, but here is the difference. When I open the source code of our project, on the bottom we can see the markup on our page. For example, here you can see hello, comma, app. When I try to find hello, comma, you can see this markup inside DOM, which actually means our Angular application was really rendered on the backend first. This is why here is our markup. And for example, Google can index our page just fine because it was rendered on the server first. And what I want to show you now is the fully implemented application of users that were rendered inside the table. As you can see, here is our table with users. We are fetching this data from the backend and we can search our users by username. Now let's look on our code. So here I have my users table and I don't have any code here, which is somehow not standard for Angular. So zero code here is about server side. This is just a normal project. I have here this users table and this is just a component where we're rendering columns and fetching user data. And let's look on the fetch here inside ngeon init. As you can see, all code is commented and we just have a single liner, this fetch data. Inside our fetch data, we simply call get users, just like normal HTTP call. And then inside subscribe, we just store these users. We can check this get users method, and this is just a normal usage of HTTP client. But here is an important part. First of all, when we try to use HTTP client, we will get a warning if we don't pass inside configuration inside app, app config server with fetch. So basically here, as you can see, I wrote provide HTTP client to be able to use HTTP in my application. But here I am providing with fetch inside. And if I remove it from here and reload the page, we are getting a warning. Angular detected that the HTTP client is not configured to use fetch API. And it is strongly recommended to use fetch API. This is why what we need to do is provide here with fetch. Another important point to remember is that Angular now with a HTTP client caches all our get and head requests. What does it mean? I'm reloading here the page and as you can see here, there is no request for our users. Why is that happening? Because this request is already done on the server side of rendering Angular. And this is exactly the data that was fetched on the backend once and it was passed to our client and we can find this data inside our source code. As you can see here on the bottom, we have a script ng state application JSON and inside we have our data of users like ID, ID1, name Jack, age 25 and so on. Which actually means in our application we don't need to change anything, we simply use our service to get the data, but they will be automatically cached between backend and client. And additionally for that, if you want, you can even cache your post requests. We must jump inside our app config.ts and here we have provide client hydration. And inside we can write with HTTP transfer for cache options. And inside options we can provide include post requests true. And with this code, we will cache also our post request. And it makes a lot of sense to do this if you are using GraphQL, for example. Additionally to that, I want to show you how previously we transferred our state from the server to the client when we used previous Angular Universal. As you can see here, I commented out some code because this was exactly the same code which I used previously inside Angular Universal. So we used such thing which is called transfer state. 
like we're checking okay if this transfer state has key users table then we're reading users from it in other case we're fetching this data which actually means we handled all these properties that we're passing from the backend to the client by ourselves and then here when i fetch users on the server i was writing okay if i am really on the server with east platform server then i want to set this key we are getting rid of this code fully and we simply fetch our data and our application is super clean everything is done under the hood now let's look on something that i don't really like what we could use previously is exactly the platform id and the function is platform server and is platform browser so for example here i can uncomment this if condition is platform server and it checks if our platform id is the server or the client and in order to show you this i will console log it here inside constructor so our platform id is this platform id and as you can see here on the top i injected it as a platform id now inside browser you can see that my platform id is browser because now we're on the client if i'm checking here inside my node we're getting platform id server and this is amazing because now we can write some if conditions if we need to write some code only for the client or only for the server. And you might ask, okay, but when we have such use case? And let's just say that here inside our constructor, I want to get access to local storage. And typically I will write here local storage get item, for example, a token. And if I'm looking inside console now, we're getting an error. As you can see on the top, local storage is not defined. Why that? Because we're inside node, there is no such thing as DOM, window, local storage, they are not there. Which actually means we can execute this code only on the client. This is why every single usage of local storage, for example, we must wrap with if condition. And in order to do that, we can easily use this code with is platform server or is platform client. So we're writing here is platform server and we're passing inside our platform ID. This is this platform ID. And now inside, I will move this code in our if condition. And actually, if we want to work with local storage, we should not check that we're on the server here, but on the client. So is platform browser. As you can see now inside console, we don't have an error. It was compiled and we can see our application, which actually means we can still use this approach with ease platform browser, just like we did previously. And it is not deprecated yet. So we simply wrap our local storage or window with this if condition and we're good to go. But essentially there is another possibility which Angular created. And this possibility is called after next render. This is exactly the code that I have here on the bottom and I will uncomment it now. So what after next render does, the code inside will simply happen after the next render. So the first render is skipped and our first render is our server side render, which actually means this code will be executed only on client. As you can see in console, we still don't have any errors. We can reload the page and this code is working. We're getting null from our local storage. But for me, this after next render is much less understandable than the condition if we're on the client or on the server. But as this function was created in Angular 17, I think it makes a lot of sense to switch from East platform server or client to this new after next render. So as you can see, server side inside Angular 17 is amazing, but the most important feature that I think was created is deferred views inside Angular 17. And if you still don't know how they are working, make sure to check this video also.